that's really why we're here is to talk about what happens if this doesn't pass so you as a community can make your decision on do you support this referendum or not because we, we want you to know what's happening and we've been out talking to community groups and they're telling us we're not saying enough about what's going to happen so we want to talk about that so if we if we don't pass the referendum we've got to increase class size we've got to reduce course offerings we're going to reduce athletic activities and, and activity opportunities we're going to reduce technology we're going to reduce spending on building maintenance we're going to delay or reduce curriculum budgets without an increase in the budget without this referendum all of these options it's not which of these options are we going to have to touch we're going to have to touch all of those and they'll be significant so we've got some examples on the next slide yeah, before you go to that keith important to know that keith's been our business manager for 20 24 years 24 years we have made budget cuts every year for 24 years so this isn't anything new. It's just there's going to be this much more drastic than it's ever been. Before. Yeah, we've never had that big a difference between inflation and what the state gave us. It's pretty rare if they give us an inflationary increase, but it's usually pretty close and ties to inflation. This this last two years, we got nothing, and inflation soared, and inflation continues to soar. So that's why the the difference is so large that we can't do it with budget cuts. I'm on this. Yep. So. You, you want to talk about this? We're going to talk about some of what the changes are. So, one of the things that's pretty shocking when people see this slide is teacher positions, 31, and this is only an estimate and probably a low estimate. It is low. Um, of equivalent teacher positions and reductions. So, what that means is instead of having, for example, here at Pioneer, we might have four fifth grade teachers, we might have three fifth grade teachers. We could be talking to class sizes of, of 31, 32 kids in a class. We might be reducing course offerings, so we might not offer all the, the high level, upper level classes that we continue to offer and are proud of what we offer in regards to some of our high academic placement classes. We might not be able to offer some of the career pathway classes that we offer that we think are phenomenal and we do a great job of, of providing those classes for kids and trying to give our kids the, the appropriate pathway for them that they're excited about. We might not be able to offer some of the small specialized classes that don't meet the minimum class size. And so, for example, it might be a, an upper level uh, math class. It might be a, um, some type of welding class or things. So it's going to hit all areas. And so we're very concerned about that. Yeah. Do you have an idea how many FTEs you have right now? Well, we have about 270 teachers. Yeah. FTEs were about 230. 230. So it's more than 10% of our staff. That's pretty significant. Getting to 15%. I know some of you who are former teachers or people in the room might be falling out of your chair right now, but that's really where we're at. Um, we are going to eliminate non-conference athletic events at Ashwaubenon High School. So instead of our kids uh, going to a um, play this competition in a non-conference where part of the FRCC conference, we would just have just all conference events and no non-conference. That's really gonna limit our co-curricular activities. Um, and then eliminate one-to-one -one computers in, all, in several grades. Uh, again, another thing we're very proud of, as you probably know, your children and your uh, grandchildren have grown up with computers. That's really a big part of what we offer every day. And that has hidden costs because Right now, some of the online curriculum that we are able to offer, we would have to purchase books too, so it just complicates things uh, immensely. 